Hello, and welcome back to what's bubbling is in draw. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at the slicer. So uh, let's go find that. It's new in Zim017 up here. And here is the example right here. All right, so uh, we saw when we were bringing in Rive that Rive had launched uh, an end slicer. And we've had a, a, a nine slicer in CreateJS. That's what Zim is built on. It, uh, helper, some helper code to do nine slicing. And that's when the corners right here remain fixed. And then you stretch out oh, much like what we've got here. It's probably the most common thing that you would do with this kind of thing. Uh, but um, the Rive example was very exciting looking. They uh, dynamically stretched things and it was an N slice, which means you can slice any number. So that's what we went then and built a tool right here. Well, this is a component in Zim called the slicer. And you can create slices and move them around. And then there's also, you can set the types of slices from fixed, stretched, or tiled. And that gives you this kind of thing. So I'm going to pick this up. And right now we're tiling that down in there to, to get that. And the idea is you can reuse images at different sizes. Then a lot of the times these are fancy corners of a scroll or something, maybe a top and a bottom of a scroll, and then you can stretch it. And when you stretch it, the top and the bottom stay fixed. And then um, the sides, much like this. Uh, so we've got, if we pull this up height-wise here, um, we're stretching this part, but not stretching the tires there. So. There's um, uh, these things over here will determine where the slicing is happening. So th there's the, the change in the slices like that. And then you would change the type of region as well. So this is right now is a tiled one. But if we set it to stretched, uh, it would probably look better stretched if it were just like this. And so what we're doing here, let's move this in a little bit like that, is now we're stretching the part that can stretch. We can't even tell. And then we've got a little driver right here. Oh, it looks like we've caught just the edge of the driver there. We need to bring this in like so. And you can resize this to see that a little bit better if you need to. And we can also upload things. So I'm going to hit the upload and let's upload the Dr. Abstract icon. So now we have a Dr. Icon, uh, a Dr. Icon, <laughs> Dr. Abstract icon. And let's change that middle portion back to a tile. And there, there we are tiling. So um, this is now, uh, or has always been, what's called a transform. Uh, so Zim's got transform on objects, and we've now set it up so that the transform, instead of scaling that, you see we're not really scaling, we're just uh, stretch, or like either stretching or doing the tiling. But if we pr pick the corner, then we are actually scaling. So transforms now will work a little bit different on this is called a sliced bitmap. This right here is a sliced bitmap rather than a normal bitmap. And as you can see, we have loaded in a picture um, to uh, slice up, and then we've matched that picture down here. So we can take a look at the code to do this. Let's uh, hit the reset on that. <clears throat> And once again, you can you run into problems. Let's just uh, try the stretch maybe on this left corner. We've got fixed at the moment. That's fine. And then in the middle, we're going to oh no, we'll stretch in the middle. Uh, we'll pull that like that. Watch what happens if I hit the wheel. So we start getting like weird warped effects uh, like that. And so that, that can happen at times. As a matter of fact, we can also animate this, um, which is kind of neat. And we can add more slices as well. So let's take a look at these slices. I mean, there that's stretched. And if I want to get this guy to be in the middle rather than at the front, then I press on this edge and I've created two more, just created two more places. And then I'm going to uh, select the inside there of these two and turn that to stretch horizontal. And uh, right now I'm kind of like on that guy, but if we move, move it a little bit like so, then you can see we've got a guy in the middle. 
Um, so that's what end slicing can do. It can leave part of it fixed so it's not stretched. Stretch these other parts over here. Keep these parts fixed. Stretch it vertically, stretch it horizontally, etc. So is that wonderful? And the tool here, uh, or the slicer itself, allows you to do multiple selection as well. And if the selections have different values, you'll get this sort of uh, browned out uh, part, and we can set all of those things to tile, which not what we want, or stretch or fixed or whatever it is. That was in vertical. Uh, if we went tile horizontally, that would be certainly different. Stretched horizontally and fixed. Okay, so that then multiple selects those. Oh, I didn't see that that one was selected as well. Um, turn that back to a stretch. There we go. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, so let's go take a look at some code. There's the reset on it, which just kind of resets it to how it started uh, with the tiling. And uh, yeah, isn't that neat? Like, let's see how, how far we can tile it. So just get this corner a little bit, make it smaller. And, oh yeah, welcome the Zim Limo, nice. Uh, all your friends can fit in that. <laughs> okay, so uh, we were gonna take a look at some code now. Um, F11 to come out of this, and we're in VS Code down below here in that index of the slicer. So, uh, here's all of the code. <clears throat> I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit. We're uh, in a Zim frame with Zim 017. We are preloading the car.png from the assets folder, local path, and we're making a pick. Uh, I set some start slices and start types. Oh, I didn't show you that. Over, over on this thing, you can import code and export code. So if you like how this is organized, there, I can copy that code right there. And note that it's got brackets around the outside, like so, and then it's got two sets. There's another array right there with an array and an array inside, and here's another array with an array and an array. So the data is pretty simple. These are your percentages right here, percentages uh, height, percentages width, I get or horizontal, vertical, and these are your types. So zero stands for fixed, two stands for uh, tiled and uh, one right there is for stretch. So we're stretching vertically, tiling horizontally, and fixing the corners right there. So pretty straightforward, but I, I can export anything that comes from the slicer here, and then that can be used for uh, for these things right here. Um, they are exported in an array themselves, so what you end, would end up getting is an array of these two things. So copy that, copy, paste, and this one here, small copy, and paste. Um, so that's what it exports. You just need to take the first one out uh, and put it in here. That's the slices parameter and that's the starts parameter. Or just make the slicer and then use this thing called exchange. Do we have an exchange showing here? Uh, I don't see it. Oh yeah, there should be one. Transform slicer. Yeah, right here. So um, preview and slicer, we're exchanging that data and that's why it was just a little bit easier to do it in one data uh, bit right there. So uh, you could just say slicer.exchange is equal to that thing that you exported. And imported then imports that one thing. It's just, like I said, a little easier than doing two different data sets. Um, or you can put nothing in here. So you can create a slicer with no slices, and that would be quite common as well. So if we wanted to do that, get rid of those, and let's open a default browser here. There it is, no slices. At that point, it says add slices here, and you can start slicing things up and setting what, what they are. Okay, so you don't need to start with slices already. Um, the slicer, by the way, is an independent component that can be used to, uh, I don't know, you might want to slice up uh, just for a puzzle, for instance, or, or something like that, you know, the parts, and then you would have to do that manually. Like now, now you know where we want the slices. You can use the Canvas API to then, or the bitmap, API, the Zim bitmap, to slice those things, like we do on the Scrambler. A Scrambler automatically slices the tile that's provided to it, 
um, and a scrambler always is an equal uh, equal sizes in the widths and equal sizes in the heights. Um, you can't do a scrambler puzzle with a little one like this and a big one like that. Uh, but you might have something else where you want a little one and a big one, and then you can use this tool to get that data. We have also hooked it up to the types here, so uh, and these two things in combination will make your sliced bitmap operate down here. So let's um, not stretch this, let's keep that part fixed horizontally. So now this part's fixed horizontally, and these other parts are stretched. <laughs> Woo uh, we probably don't need this one, so if you don't need it, select it and hit the delete. And if you don't want to see any of this stuff, you can hit the little negative sign up on the top here and just see, see what we've got there. Uh, that's the loading. This is the multiple select. All these things are optional, so you can um, choose which ones you want and which ones you don't want, including the resize as well, which is also optional. All right, oh, back to the code. So we've got a slicer with uh, no uh, data passed in. So that would be the slices and the types are not passed in. Here are the other things that you can turn on or off. Most of those, well, title bar is a string, but all the rest I think are Boolean. And we're positioning the slicer up above. When it changes, if there's a preview already, the preview is the uh, sliced bitmap itself down below. So that's the car down below. So if we do have a preview, then um, when we change the slicer up here, we want to set the preview. We're exchanging the data with the slicer. So we're taking the slicer's data and passing it into the preview's data, basically. And that causes the preview to change. So that's why when I move this like this, this is uh, also moving down there. <laughs> nice car. <laughs> I think we better keep this uh, down below. We'll keep that fixed. Uh, is that what I want? In the vertical. That should have fixed all those things. I don't see it fixed. Um, tiled, stretched. All right, let's hit a reset. I think, I'm sure that was fine. It's just they must not have been looking at the right thing. And uh, this side is fixed right now. Um, which is, oh, I just added another one. Ah, I'm losing it. Anyway, uh, deleting these things. If we don't need them all. And like I said, sure, everything is fine. It's just uh, not paying attention to what I'm doing. Okay, back on over here then. Uh, let's see, we've got, uh, this is the slicer. We're cloning the picture because we're going to use the, the picture again down here for the preview. So here's the preview where we're passing and we're taking the pick height and passing in another clone of the picture. Um, and we've got preview cloning pictures here. So generally we're cloning the picture because if you use it in the slicer, it will uh, possibly be scaled or get sliced. And if you used it here, it's again, it's being turned into a, um, it's being cached and turned into a sliced bitmap. So uh, it's probably safer to just kind of clone it along, otherwise you might run into problems. So we're cloning the picture, throwing it into the slicer, and then it, when it changes, we are updating the preview. Okay, so we saw that bit. Slicer.unloaded. If we, the loaded event will trigger when we load another picture. And that's a, that's a zim loader that's inside of there. And we're going to dispose the, if there is a preview, we're going to dispose it. And then we're going to set the preview to a new sliced bit, bitmap. Uh, and we're again cloning the object that time. So let's see, how, what is that? So the slice bitmap is a thing down at the bottom. We just changed the picture in the thing at the top. So that's that's when we upload a picture here. Boom. Then we are, um, now cloning the object from here. So when we upload it, the object, uh, the slicer.object obj is the picture. And then we're taking that down below and cloning it so that we can uh, do that down there. And there she be. We also can set the scales as we're building things. I don't know if you noticed that, but we started off with the picture smaller in the slicer just so that the slicer a tool up top here 
is smaller and then we can also say how what scale to start this thing off is at as well and we're positioning that at the bottom and then the transform here is something new with transform as well as we've added the min scale x and max scale x Mm, or <laughs> min scale x and min scale y. Uh, so in this case, uh, well, all four of those things are there. In this case, we're only really caring about the minimum. And what that is doing is it's not letting the transform go any smaller than what you see right there. So that's uh, the percentage. Roop. And then it can go as long as we want. Before that would just like flip right on over, which works for scale. When when you're just doing the scale and making it flip right on over, uh, it's fine because it just kind of inverts the picture or, or flips the picture. But with the sliced content, uh, it just disappears. So we decided not to um, let you squeeze it so far. And so we fixed up the transform to add the minimums there. And it does have maximums as well. All right, so that's when the slicer loads and there's a reset button. When we press the reset button right here, it is basically loading the original picture, loading the original slicer data, updating this so that it matches. And that looks like this. So we're setting the object on the slicer to be a clone of the original picture at this scale. We're also clearing any memorized. Uh, so as you refresh, it will remember what you had before. So if we take this and move it along here like so, and I hit refresh, then it's in the same place as it was before. Uh, the reset will clear that so that when I refresh, it doesn't remember the last data. Uh, okay, so that's that. Um, let's see. The slicer.exchange, so there we are putting back in the start slices and the start types into the exchange. And we're disposing the preview and remaking the preview much like we did here. All right, uh, here is the new slicer, um, new slicer types right here. And uh, that is what this tool is right here. So it's kind of like, useless on its own. You wouldn't use this on its own. And therefore, we didn't quite know whether to put it in Zim, but it just sort of makes sense to, to have it. If we have a slicer, it's not very big. So we have sort of a partner slicer types, which work to make specifically end slicing. And it's got the import and export in it, as well as the choosing of the, the slicer types. And it works in conjunction with that. So basically, you make a new slicer types, you pass it the slicer that you're using and it'll all work there. Here is the slice bitmap itself. And remember, you don't need all this, all this tooling stuff. The idea behind slice bitmap is that you can reuse a bitmap at different and different arrangements. And therefore, you're only loading one image and using it at different sizes. Um, and so that would be the, the, the whole tool is more so just for you as you're creating things to figure out how, how much slicing you want to do and what type. Okay. And once you've done it, you hit export and you use that data right here. So you would pass in, uh, instead of the slicer dot slices, which gives us the slices and the types of the slicer, you would just pass in what we had up here, these guys start slice or what you know whatever the data is that you want and this is what you would be using you would be using this slice bitmap you probably wouldn't even be transforming it um, okay so that's the idea this whole arrangement is more of a tool however it may be that you want to provide tooling for your end users so that they can slice up their own pictures and include them in their game that they're making that is based in your environment your your whole app environment okay so uh, because we can do it. We want to let other people do it. That's sort of a Zim motto. If we can make art with Zim, uh, we want to let other people also be able to make art with Zim. So it's better to make an environment or a tool to let others also uh, create, be creative. Okay, and I guess that's it then, huh? Uh, we can animate that. Do you want to see that? So here, uh, what, one thing is that if it's animating, uh, I guess I could just try animating this guy up here, the preview. 
So to do that, let me uncomment this. I have two previews now. I'll leave that preview and put the animate. That's this part right here. I don't need an animate call. And this animate will go on the other preview and we won't bother with a holder. Okay, so uh, now we've got the, the, the slice bitmap. We're positioning it, setting the transform, center, oh, not centering it on the holder. Uh, we don't need to position it. All we need to do is animate it. Okay, so then we're animating this uh, preview and let's hope it works. Back and refresh. Oh, well, okay, it would help if we were sliced up properly. And uh, what else do we want here? So that will be tiled. And these guys are fixed, not stretched. Fixed and fixed. Okay. So there we go. Um, whoop, wee! I guess I don't have that quite, I don't know where it would, um, yeah, I mean, it's close enough. <laughs> there it is, <laughs> without windows. But uh, th this would need to be adjusted to make sure that as it gets to the small part, it doesn't cut a person in half. Um, it just sort of depends on the situation here, and that's getting to, the big one is getting cut in half. But there is, that's almost one there. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, so um, do you see how that's animating from the left-hand side here? Even if we were to take the registration point, which is what that is, and put it in the middle, it's not scaling from the registration point. Uh, this is. So if I take that, it's that scaling from the registration point. Whoa, and it's rotating about the registration point. But the uh, scale bitmap, vroom, 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 the scale bitmap, hopefully this doesn't become the YouTube cover picture. <laughs> anyway, the, the scale bitmap is not stretching itself from the registration point, which is too bad. We did take a look at that and it was really, really, really complicated um, because we're tiling and stuff and we're going back into CreateJS. We had reached back into CreateJS and completely remade their nine slicing stuff into N slicing, like just totally rewrote that. And it's pretty tricky canvas work to, to do that. Um, plus all the pretty tricky <laughs> Zim stuff to do it here. So anyway, in the end, we, um, just said, okay, if, if you ever want to animate it from the registration point or from the center, for instance, here's what we can do. So let's put that away and come back here and see what that might look like. So, boop. Uh, I probably don't need that turned on. And we're commenting out this and semicolon. All right, so now what we have is a holder. It really doesn't matter the size. We're putting that at the bottom. We're making the slice bitmap as before, but we're centering it on the holder. And then we don't want to position it if we've centered it. We want the holder. Let's see. Yeah, we don't want that there. We want the holders already. Okay, so we didn't need that. And then we're animating. All right, let's have a look. So we save that up and we refresh here. And now what we've got is uh, the car is now appearing to animate from the middle like that, if, if that's what you wanted. And the trick is in an animate call, we're setting our preview to center in the holder again. So we're just constantly recentering it in the holder like that and that keeps it centered. All right. So there we go. That's a slice bitmap. We're kind of looking forward to seeing what you can make with that. Bring back the old traditional one there. Uh, let's go take a peek at it in the docs, shall we? So let's see. Docs. And then if we hit slice like that and enter, there it is, the sliced bitmap with its parameters. A description, a couple examples. Basically, it's uh, based on the example that we just showed you, but there is only the slice bitmap with some simple data saying, hey, a, a quarter on this corner, a corner on the right hand corner, uh, and these are top and bottoms also at quarters. So this would be cutting the object into four. And 
then setting the middle stretched and the outsides fixed. Classic nine slice. A centering and transformation. And this is roughly what we went through. And there's all your parameters. The types, by the way, are fixed, stretch, and tile, zero, one, two. Here's a look at the data, talking about what it is, etc. Your various methods. There is now, instead of SCA, you would use slices SCA, and you could scale the horizontal and vertical that way, or use the types. Oh, something that I didn't show you, yeah, I guess I'll show you that, is commented out here in the animate. Darn, I just that all the other way commented out in the animate is animating this thing called SH. So that's a slice horizontal. So rather than animating the whole width, we can animate the, the zero, that, that's the first horizontal slice. That's a vertical line though. A horizontal is the slice is horizontal, but the line of it is vertical. And we're animating that to 0.31%. So let's see what that gives us. Um, did I close all that down? Looks like I did. Okay, open in default browser. So now uh, I'm not sure what this is going to look like. It almost looks the same, but ba basically we're animating this first slice right here. Um, okay, can't quite tell what's going on. All right, we're not animating the width. We're actually animating the slice line that's down in here. So all of the lines that are sliced are available as SH0, SH1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, however many you have. Actually, I think we limited it to, I can't remember, 20 or 40 or something like that. And same with your verticals. There's also um, properties available for the types as well, but you probably won't have to set the property types, but this allows you to animate only like specific lines, okay? Much like it feels when you when you move lines so you can animate that effect as well all right back to the data um all right uh the other ones let's see are the slicer so the slicer is available under components and there's all of its information and here's the slicer types as well and it's also available as a component uh, whereas the sliced bitmap itself is under the bitmap right there so there's bitmap slice bitmap is the next one okay in the docs and i think that's it uh, you can find that again back on the zim site here under zim 017 there's the slice example we'll also add that two examples haven't done that yet okay and you can find it right there like that. We hope you enjoy. I am Dr. Abstract. This has been a What's Bubbling at Zim. And we've taken a look at the end slicer, the Zim slicer. Cheers. And thanks to all those who uh, paved the way for that. You know, the inventors of the end slice or nine slice in the first place. Uh, and uh, Rive for doing such a great job at putting the end slice in theirs and making it look quite exciting. As soon as we saw that, we went, oh, we should do that. <laughs> and so there you go. It's done. Cheers.